Howdy, peeps and peoples. We have a, uh, well, we started out with a pretty sucky Monday, uh, but it turned out pretty good in the end. This was a great big red oak I'd cut down. It's a big triple stump, and I pulled a bunch of guts out of the center. I gotta get my chainsaw figured out and get it on Brutus. I think it's coming up. But I didn't, I wasn't losing no sleep over it because uh, it was gonna be a triple stump anyway. This is a white oak I about dropped on myself. Look how many inches I missed by. And uh, ride out with Junkie and shoot the bull mess with y'all uh, after we put her day in. And then uh, head back to the mill and explain to y'all what actually happened this morning to cause our grief this morning with the power surge or whatever it is that we had in there at the mill. Yeah, well, it was some kind of power surge is what it was. I spilled hydraulic oil on my truck and choked that. Went on about it and Stevie ends up driving off the bank, off the end of the abyss. Uh, I'm late getting to the woods this morning. Had to work in the mill this morning for a while. There's Big D getting chained down. I'll go in here. Oh, what a morning. So I guess at the, re at the sawmill, through the weekend there had to be an electrical storm and messed up. <clears throat> messed up, uh, hang on a second. Mama, Stevie's done parked his truck in there, hadn't he? Yeah, break three for Joni Balone. Come in, Joni Balone, over. No Joe Balone. There's no Joe Balone this morning. Yeah, I was trying to fill up my hydraulics this morning because I have a little leak underneath. Spilled that all over the truck. Man, this is a definite Monday morning. Let's see what he does. He's gonna take off here in a second. Whee! No, not much. He's leaving some tracks. Y'all think he knows what he's doing over there? Steve ain't none of that hickory, that's all ash. Oh, the hickory on the bank over there, that's what he's going on about. I was like, what are you talking about, Steve? That looks like an ash hole, buddy. Oh, yeah? Nice ash. Okay. He is making firewood. Yep, well, let's get out of here. We gotta climb up on this hill and do our thing. These little swamp oak trees or whatever is all over the friggin' place down here. Jeez, my knees. I just got him some money wood coming back. Woo! Are we saved up there? Oh, Jesus, Pete. This thing. Knocked a chunk out of the bottom of it. You can see what I knocked out the bottom. I guess it got a little too much, a little too carried away. I pulled out and I seen the gap starting to, to shut just a little bit, so I gassed on it. Well, Brutus gas on it's like a trickle effect. So I tried to run past it. This thing settled down, pop, turned into a, a squealer and started squealing down. And I'm watching my windshield come like this, and it just did miss this as I'm gassing on it, and it fell and lands right here on my track. I stopped and turned the camera on as soon as it hit the ground. <laughs> so look at that. Line it up. Beautiful. I meant to do that. <laughs> Get 
lined up just right because we got a tight hole to squeeze this big boy through. And I think I'm about right. I might kill that poplar tree over to the left. If I don't kill myself, my, my brood is. So far, no lift. Unless it's leaning back towards me too hard. Don't lean back here now. I just want to see if I can lift him. Woo! Either he's heavy or he's got a lot of wood holding her bow. Okay, sit there. Sit there. Okay, so far so good. These are just testing the waters. Oh, that ain't good. Because I've cut about all I can cut and he's not cut off. <laughs> well, we're going to tater tot it down then. We'll do it my way. You don't want to play nice? Yeah, I'd like that, would you? Come on, you're red oak. Start acting like one. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a big heavy sow. No, not that way. Beautiful. So let me give y'all, let me show y'all what we're dealing with this morning. Plenty of personnel issues today, but they're good, man. It's just hot. And when it's hot, everybody's testy. So here's the deal. Yeah, I don't blame y'all. Okay. This part's brand new. This is the control panel. Those of you that's fairly fresh to the channel, you might not have seen this. This is a resaw. Let me back up. Here's a resaw. This is where the production comes from on the sawmill. Now the resaw, the head saw takes uh, a heavy kerf, over a quarter inch kerf by here, is what the head saw takes. That's the width of the cut. All right, you're cutting money and you turn it into sawdust. So you want a thin curve as you can get. Only problem is thick curve comes durability. We're sawing the whole tree here, so it's hard to go straight to bands here. Although there's companies that do it, uh, but here we don't. So we got, so we square up with the head saw. See this here, this stuff with Wayne on it is coming from the head saw. We square up from the head saw then we kick it off to the resaw. We gotta get it down to 18 inches so some of these blocks are quite a bit cut off of them you know but that's to saw them down to where they fit because they got to be down to an 18 inch piece before they go through the an 18 inch can is what goes through the uh resaw once it gets down to that 18 just a quick lesson for those of you that needs it those of you that don't skip ahead all right you bring them on and they buzz them around and you keep putting your good face up against the fence and you rotate them around you can see them cradle chain turners so you rotate them around like this can't right here. See how the heart's at? So you're gonna saw off this face. You kind of center your heart, you box your heart and stuff like that. 
Um, and then you keep spinning it. So on the money wood off, you do, you saw it according to priority. So you're cutting the priority off the face of the board or the cant. So you priority, 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 until you get it all the way down to where there's nothing left on it but low grade. And it's creeping in. When you get to small, get down to the defect zone, down where the heart's at, you start seeing them. You boom, bang, bang, boom, bang, bang. Uh, a very wise lumber grader that taught me quite a bit on getting me started. I still, I'm still a beginner, but uh, you know when it's not, if it's black and looking back. I love you, Benji. So anyways, and he watches this. He might be, he might see this too. So anyways, there's a lot, there's two operators, one up here, one down there, and they're spinning and they're working in tandem. So it goes around, 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 and that's where your production comes from because you can keep it almost can't stick a butt to butt through it probably but you can keep them pretty close to together so you just bang bang board 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 see what i mean that's where you get your production okay there is a lot of controls there's basically your fuses going out on your outputs going out so there's uh let's see i don't know how many that is but that's how many funk there's two cards empty the fuse folded so i don't know how many functions that takes in but that's all of them that's all the functions and this here's all the inputs and that's uh inputs coming in and there's some inputs coming in and then here's your ground cards and here's your hot cards your ace a you know all these red ones are hots and here's your neutrals the whites are neutrals, the X one's the AX2, CX2, X1, X. So you got your your hot or your uh, inputs coming from controllers out there or here from this box here. So your inputs come in, your power comes in, there's your ground strip, there's your neutral strip, and then here's all your inputs. And they go up to these cards on the PLC. And all these, see the input, this is all an input card. Input, 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 input. So all the inputs light up here. So it tells you what inputs. So say this is card four and input nine. Oh, that's input side. So four, nine. So that's that circuit. Then you, then you punch, when you punch an input, the PLC then makes an output, and here's your output cards. One, two, three, four, five, six output cards. And there's there's your abbreviation, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And here's all your outputs. So that's going straight out to work. So, so if you got a problem with circuit number seven, four, which is activated right now, seven, four, I should be able to take a tester and it should be hot. Now, there's a fuse in here. So you can check your fuse to see if it's hot on both sides. You know, you can diagnose. It looks complex to be in her, but it, it, it can be. Com it can look complex if you just look at it as an engine, as a whole. So, long story short, we come in this morning. This is all dead. We're like, what the Hades? It's all dead. No lights, no nothing, like we popped the breaker. So I got to checking in here, and here is your main power. I don't know what happened here, but here's your hot coming in. You see your AC1, here's your neutral, AX2, and this beer ground, that's going to the green down here. So that's your input card. So here's where, so I checked the red wire and it had full fire coming in. I checked continuity to ground, uh, come on out, output on the, on, the, on the ground and the neutral. So everything checked out, but this light right here, Deader than a doorknob. Oh, scoozy. Deader than a doorknob. So, this become, we diagnosed that that was bad. I don't know where the old one's at. I think it got chucked. But, that card was bad and we had to replace it. Now, we pulled the card out. I don't see the card anywhere. I don't see the, the, the power supply anywhere. We pulled the card out, or pulled the power supply out, and there was a bunch of uh, 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 diodes and uh, capacitors 
that were burned up, but not, not melted, but, 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 but hot looking. You tell there's, been, there's burn spots on the circuit board. And both ends of the board, there was diodes and capacitors on one end, it was hot, diodes and capacitors on the other end, it was hot. It's just hot everywhere. You tell you, I can't, you couldn't put your finger on it, you couldn't technically see the board burn out anywhere. But it was somewhere. There was a diode or a capacitor or something shorted out or something burn out or something. So, long story short, thank goodness for CED. They said, well, we had her sitting here on the shelf. Come on and get it. So, Derek jumped in the truck, headed to CED, and picked her up. Up there. Okay, so it's a couple days later. I said I would show you all this. So, here is the power supply. Here's how it sits in the front. And then here you can see the burn spots from the diodes and the daggone capacitors. See it in there? They've been getting hot. I don't know if any of that's bad or what, or what. Obviously something's arced out in there. But it didn't actually burn. Look at them burn spots. You know it. So I don't know what's burning out, if it's a, if it's back feeding through a diode that ain't doing its job, or, see there's a hot spot here too. And there's a, uh, what's on the back side of that hot spot? I guess a capacitor, I don't know. I'm not elect an electrical electrician. But, anyways. But that fixed your problem. See, here's another burn spot. You can't really see where it's burning through the board or nothing. Oh, well. Probably. Again, he's having a parts room day. She loves the parts. She grumbles around like an old cranky old woman. She <laughs> hate parts. Let me tell you, if I had another life, which I will not, I would be a carpenter. I would own one tool. Two tools, a hammer and a saw. Nothing would move, nothing would need a battery, nothing would wear out except me. <laughs> but life would be so simple. Yeah. <laughs> and I would starve and have to live in a cave. <laughs> Eat squirrels, which I like squirrels. <laughs> yeah. Papa used to always eat the brains, remember that? Oh Ooh. God, yeah. Oh gosh, let me, let me wipe off again. My phone is a nasty, nasty mess. Come on. All right, so Paul Carter, he always ate the squirrel brains. He loves squirrel brains. And they look like brains. And it's, it's, there's no disguising it. It's actual brains. He just pops their little heads open and eats the brains like. Disgusting. Ugh. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to hit the buttons and leave me likes, comments, stuff. Let me know what's up. Uh, uh, and to anybody that's wanting logger weight gear, go to loggerweight.com and uh, help yourself as a shop there. And uh, we got all that good mess to take care of it. And uh, mostly just want to say thanks, everybody. Hope everybody has a good one later on.